this is Dr. Emily Sherning with AR, and I'd like to say hello to all of our friends in Missouri. There are a lot of great land values in Missouri, and as I set out to research this forecast, I really didn't have a lot of preconceived notions about what's projected to change in the area. So I learned a lot of interesting things in my research, and I think that you'll be interested too. Let's check it out. We'll start with sort of the more challenging news. Let's look at the heat up that's projected. We'll look at the USDA heat map, and we can see what heat looks like today in Missouri. Here's the key. These numbers represent how many days over 86 degrees you see in a typical summer. So right now, no surprise to anyone, Missouri's pretty hot. You have as many as 90 days over 86 throughout much of the state. Let's look how that's projected to change under RCP 4.5, which is a very moderate doable re um, reduction in emissions at mid-century. And we can see that it does change a lot, right? That warmer zone that was at the bottom of the state has migrated way up into Iowa. And that first red color on the key indicates 120 days over 86 a year. So another month of summer. But let's zoom in here on middle Missouri. And we can see that all of the population centers are kind of on the edge of those areas, right? Kansas City, Jefferson City, and St. Louis. So that's, that's hopeful that a lot of your areas that would have the highest energy demands are potentially in the areas that are staying a little bit cooler. And if we zoom out, we can see that these very hot bands, which pretty much follow topography, are not areas that are like a month hotter today. So this is a little bit unexpected. And if you live in that area where there's a lot of variability, a lot of sensitivity, I would recommend checking out the USDA hub tutorial on my channel, and you can see exactly where you fall. I think that it's worth noting, and let's look at mid-century again, that this indicates a very sensitive forecast in the middle of the state. And the more we can reduce emissions, the more we can bring them down now, the better the outlook we'll have here, and the less stress we'll have on the trees over here in the Lake of the Ozarks area. We know that's a very pretty heavily forested area and that the trees could be extremely stressed by a two month increase in high temperatures. So, that map, let us look at the projected typical summer heat, but we also need to talk about future heat waves. By 2050 in the Midwest, every decade is projected to have at least one big heat wave, 13 degrees above current highs. So with your current highs in the high 80s, low 90s generally, you're definitely looking at heat waves around 110 to 115. And this part is important. Those extreme heat waves will last for at least five days. So that's potentially deadly heat for both humans and livestock. Just like in my home state, your neighbor, I'm up in Iowa, we're unsurprisingly looking at similar projected heat waves. And part of building the resilience in our region will be preparing for these heat emergencies. There are three things we should do in our part of the Midwest, prepare for these heat emergencies, which if we don't prepare, they could cause substantial loss of life, but that doesn't have to happen. We can get ready for this. The first thing we should do is work on our power infrastructure. A strong, diverse, localized power system is crucial for keeping the air on during heat emergencies. The second and equally important thing is working on our communities. If your air goes out, if you don't have air conditioning, you need places to go. Friends and family who can take you in and community places like libraries and houses of worship. The third thing we should do is that in areas where underground shelters like solid basements are available, and I know in many parts of Missouri, soil conditions don't permit a lot of underground construction. So this might not apply to you, but it's good to remember that in areas where we have underground shelters, they aren't just good for protection in a tornado emergency. They can provide daytime shelter in a heat emergency. If we get these 110, 115 degree heat waves in our lifetime, you need to do whatever you can to stay cool during the day, then get to longer term safety or fix the air at night. I wanna take a look at the impact of that heat on crops. Let's check this out. The feds in the NCA, the National Climate Assessment, they actually have a little bit of Missouri specific modeling. Where in Southern Missouri, we can see what the historical average five day max temperature, like heat wave type temperature would be, It'd be like 97. Not like a freak heat wave there. That's like the normal hottest part of the summer for you guys in 76 to 2005. In mid-century, under the low emissions RCP 4.5 scenario, you can see that's going to go up to 102. So let's remember 102 and look down here. 
at these failure for growth and failure for reproduction numbers in corn and soy. And we can see that we've hit then failure for growth for soy, and we've hit failure for reproduction for both of them. So they're not going to be setting and filling pods or setting and filling grain under these potentially very hot summers that we're going to have in Missouri. You should see this fairly boring graph here, this fairly boring little table. So we're looking at a situation here where we see this fairly boring little table here, fairly straightforward table, and we should see it like big writing on the wall. We should see it like a big shout because Missouri is gonna be on the border for the future of corn and soy in America. And that is very important, very important to our food supply and very important to our economy. If you look at those numbers, we can see that there are going to be real serious failures and reductions in yield in corn and soy in Southern Missouri and below. South of Missouri, it's gonna be even worse because there are additional challenges related to higher nighttime temperatures that will really reduce soy yields. Right now, soy is important for Missouri. This is projected to become a marginal area for the crop, particularly in Southern Missouri. We have a big challenge here, but let's pull together some more information because I think it's also a big opportunity for agriculture in the state. Let's get some more information on the agricultural front. For one thing, we're looking at a 20, 30% change in our vapor deficit in Missouri by 2050. So plants are going to need substantially more water. It's not a big surprise they're gonna need more water in these hotter conditions, right? Everything will. So let's talk about the weather. We're not looking at a big change in total precipitation in this area, but it's gonna keep falling in those crazy storms with that pattern of drought and deluge, as well as more big wind events. With the instability on the rain, with it being harder to rely on rain to water crops, let's take a look at where water comes from in Missouri. I wanna share this link from your DNR. I was not expecting, because you know I'm not from Missouri, you guys have so many aquifers in Missouri, so many of them. And generally speaking, they're all pretty healthy in terms of their water level. But I put this map up here. You can see what aquifer particularly you overlie. And then it's very easy on this DNR website to drill down and get more information about the levels and health of the aquifer that you happen to share. So there's really good news in terms of your urban centers. Both Kansas City and St. Louis, they're both on surface water. In many states in this region, the cities are on aquifers and nothing drains an aquifer like a city. It's a worse than agriculture in many states in terms of the degree of drawdown that we're facing. Throughout the state, you have a bunch of different aquifers with a lot of variety in the baseline water quality and what sort of output you might expect with a general trend of more trouble accessing groundwater in the north of the state. Once you get south of Jefferson City, south of the river, you're generally speaking of looking at fairly accessible and plentiful groundwater. Even in areas where it's a little harder to get at the water, there's a lot of good news regarding the overall situation. For one thing, this state like Utah has a long history of monitoring groundwater levels and has kept groundwater use sustainable. This is not a state where you're looking at potentially running low on water, which is not true everywhere, even in the Midwest. It's a huge positive for the state, this water outlook. Your challenge in Missouri isn't water conservation so much, not so much using less water, but care of the water you have. Right now, Missouri's laws, even if followed to the letter, they don't do enough to protect the water from pollution. Some of your aquifers are being polluted right now by agricultural runoff. Those nitrates, they can get into the water and they can cause a lot of problems with human reproduction. Women are often unable to bring a pregnancy to term if they drink water contaminated with that agricultural runoff. They can have miscarriage after miscarriage, and it's very sad. You can't smell, taste, or see that the water has anything wrong with it. So for a healthy future in Missouri, for healthy babies in Missouri, stepping up your game on protecting those aquifers is a big deal. You will probably want to be using them more for agriculture as a way to keep water flowing during dry years and a way to potentially provide irrigation to valuable crops, table crops. You've got a great opportunity to protect these aquifers now. Let's get one more piece of information as we start to think about this potential agricultural transformation in Missouri. Let's look over at the plant hardiness zones. That's a nice proxy for the winter lows. Between 1980 and 2009, 
the data has got you with um, zone five at the top, zone six, and a little bit of zone seven. And let's see what'll happen as we approach mid-century. So this is a big shift, right? The area that was zone five is going to be zone six. Zone seven is moving up substantially. And let's zoom in a little bit so that we can check on the population centers. We'll go backwards and forwards. So we see heat islands appearing around Kansas City, Jefferson City. And did we get one at St. Louis? Let's check it out again. Yep. So all of your population centers are going to be moving at least one solid plant hardiness zone forward. So we can see that under many areas that are very forested, there are substantial changes in the plant hardiness zones. That winter warming combined with the stress of those warmer, longer summers could be very stressful for mature trees. We've seen it happen in the West, out in California, where warming conditions in the summer and the winter contributed to mass tree death. And that of course can lead to wildfire, but there are ways we can prepare for those conditions and learn from the West. There has been a lot of success using controlled burns to manage fire prone areas and maintaining healthy margins between homes and forested areas, fire prone areas is a crucially important technique as is making sure your home is well closed up if you need to evacuate. It sounds silly, but in California, they've learned that most homes that burn, it's because embers get into the home and the home burns from the inside. So a well-closed home is much less likely to be lost. Let's pull all this together though. There are big changes coming from Missouri. No joke there. The heat is gonna get serious and not just in heat wave years. Your typical summer will have a high around 102. That's very hot. It's hot enough that you will get serious yield drops in many current crops, particularly in soy. But with those mild winters and the increased growing season and your abundance of water, I often tell people in Iowa that we're looking at a future where we will provide valuable table crops, but you, Missouri, you're in an even sweeter spot, probably the best I've seen for conversion to table crop production in the face of the coming changes. You could handle irrigation needs much more easily. And if you haven't checked out any of the forecasts for the Southwest, where a lot of our table crops come from now in California and Arizona, you really should. There are big changes coming to American agricultural markets. It's a huge opportunity. I have not seen a state better placed for the conversion to table crop agriculture than Missouri. It could be a huge moneymaker and allow you to grow the kind of food that people in your area wanna eat. It allows you to establish a healthy local food culture. Great potential. It's a big opportunity, but there are challenges too. You are also looking at increased fire danger and increased threats from severe weather. Building resilience is absolutely critical in the face of these coming changes, but you've got a lot of potential to do that in Missouri. In the face of these changes, I wouldn't get out. I'd dig in. This is Dr. Scherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe. Help get the message out there. There is hope. We can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.